Okay, I gotta admit, I'm a bit afraid making this video. In the past, I talked non-biased about Cyprus. I talked about the good and the bad, but I never talked about some of the biggest secrets of Cyprus and this may upset some very important people. But I'm a person that prefers the truth even if it's uncomfortable and that is the exact reason why I still decided to make this video for you guys. I read some comments that I may be associated or sponsored by the government, but this couldn't be further from the truth. I'm completely independent and free and thus I can say whatever I want and think and this sometimes helps me in life, but sometimes it brings trouble. So little disclaimer, if this is the last video on my channel, you know what happened. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Rico Go, and in this video I will talk about the 7 biggest secrets of Cyprus. Number 1. The Golden Passport. Scandal. Yeah, I know, many people do know about it, but I have a whole different view on this one that was never openly discussed. First, for everyone that is not familiar with this one, Cyprus is a relatively small island and the GDP and the economy is heavily dependent on shipping, commodity trading as well as tourism of course. And so the government was thinking about how to attract more money and wealth to the country, which is not bad at all because every country in the world does the same. So what Cyprus did is create an environment that would attract a lot of wealth from individuals and companies that want to optimize their taxes. Not in an obscure way, but just so that the government doesn't get more than 50% of your money, which is the case in many Western countries. Now, another way that they wanted to attract a lot of money is by the golden passport or by the citizenship by investment program. This would allow foreign people to buy a luxurious villa here in Cyprus and at the very same time get the citizenship of Cyprus instantly. This was used mainly by rich Asian and Russian people, meaning a rich Chinese guy suddenly decided that he didn't want to live in China anymore, so he bought a property here in Cyprus, 1 million, 2 million, 3 million and then he would get the Cyprus passport and thus a entry door to Europe basically. The more money he would spend, the more passports he would get for family and friends. For some people it was a crazy shopping tour. Now, then there was this media company and they exposed the scandal by tricking the local agency as well as the government with a fake story of a criminal that wanted to escape his country and move to Cyprus. I must say the setup was really professional, but that's what journalists are for. They are very good at portraying a narrative however they want. So of course the people here in Cyprus, they fell for it and tried to give this criminal a passport. I'm not trying to defend the parties here in Cyprus because surely mistakes were made and also some people definitely deserved what happened and some of the agencies just probably became too greedy and they were flashed by all the money because they increased the prices more and more and instead of advertising the properties, they advertised the passport in the first place. But what I don't agree with is to say that Cyprus is the only country that is doing that and they are basically the bad boy. In this documentary, they basically put Cyprus in a vacuum and they make it seem like Cyprus is the only country committing such a crime. Whereas there are countless other countries doing the exact same thing. <laughs> Just google citizenship by investment and you will see how many options you have. The procedures they vary, in some countries it's buying real estate, in other countries it's doing a donation, but everyone with an IQ of at least a sheep knows what's going on here. Alright, I could go so much more into detail, but we have more secrets to talk about. If you find this topic interesting, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below and I may make a separate video only about this topic. Number 2. The debt in this country. This one is publicly not so known and I wasn't sure if I should add it to this video because not many people like to talk about it. But if we just ignore it, the problem doesn't get solved, so I needed to address it. And how do I say it in the most professional way? Well, this entire country is in big debt. The causes for this are the following. One, basically every country in the world is in debt. But two, what's different in Cyprus is that we have a lot of defaulted loans or also called red loans. Many people in Cyprus have a loan that they simply can't pay back. So there are a lot of delinquent loans. So the borrowers are not paying back the money to the lenders. 
But if the vast majority of the population can't pay back the loans, what should they do? Put everyone on the streets? Not really. So what they are doing is frequently picking some individuals that get legal action and the property gets repossessed in order to hope that the other borrowers get some kind of fear. I heard some unofficial numbers and I'm not sure if this is true. I heard that two thirds of the loans were not being paid back or they were late prior to the banking crisis in 2012. But that's the past because there are actually much less red loans these days because getting a loan became so hard here in Cyprus. Whereas in the past you could get a lot of money with a very low salary these days. It's very hard to get a loan, you need to pay a very high deposit and you need to show a very strong history of income. And this actually leads to secret number three which is the banking crisis in 2012 and 13. In 2012 Cyprus had a huge banking crisis which was actually worldwide known because they were exposed to Greek bonds which were becoming effectively worthless. In combination with other factors such as the red loans, two of the biggest banks in Cyprus had to make a radical decision. They had to do a so-called haircut to all balances with over 100,000 euros which basically means the balance, the bank balance was split in half. Wikipedia says to that the 2012 and 13 Cypriot financial crisis in return for a 10 billion bailout from the European Commission, the ECB, the central bank and the International Monetary Fund. The Cypriot government was required to impose a significant haircut on uninsured deposits. So basically Europe said to Cyprus, okay, we're gonna help you, but you need to become a barber first. And this basically means they were forced to it because otherwise the whole banking system would collapse. And this obviously was a very controversial topic because never before European depositors lost such a high amount of money just because of a failure of central banks. And this obviously leaves a lot of questions about the banking system as a whole. I personally don't feel very safe having a lot of money in my bank account, reading such stories and being so close to it and living in the same country. So the worst thing is actually that the trust was kind of broken and as everyone knows this is very hard to recover. But the economy and the banking sector, they recovered very well. Actually, Cyprus is doing very good, even though they have some difficulties such as the red loans that we discussed earlier. Number four, UK army and airports. Cyprus is actually the only country where there are three countries residing in one country. And that is obviously the Republic of Cyprus, but also in the north there are Turkish territories which were invaded in 1974. And then we also have British air forces and British airports in two parts of Cyprus. As Cyprus was a British island before, the Brits are still here to keep peace between the north and the south. And we even have a fourth party here in Cyprus and that is the UN peacekeeping forces, the guys with the blue helmets that basically keep peace in certain territories in the world. I find those British territories so interesting because one of them is actually very close to my place. They are between Limassol and Paphos and it's a beautiful coast road. On the right side you have an amazing sea view and amazing mountains but if you look on the left side and on the right side there are huge fences and you're not allowed to enter. It's basically only UK and British territory. And also so interesting is secret number five, undercover billionaires. Yes, you heard right, it's billionaires with a B. According to Forbes magazine, there are currently three billionaires here in Cyprus. I can tell you right now, it's much more than that. It's surely also more than double that. There are huge big boys here in Cyprus, especially in Limassol, people with wealth that most people can't even imagine. Russian oligarchs, the richest woman of Asia, so many other extremely wealthy families and parties have their fingers in the Cyprus pie in some sort of way. And that's all I can say without this video really being my last one. <laughs> Back to the topic. That's why I love Cyprus. We have so many different people here, not just because of the money, but a lot of different cultures, a lot of artists, a lot of creative people, a lot of spiritual people, and more and more people are coming to Cyprus. Number six, the church. And that's a very dangerous one. The church in Cyprus is very strong, financially and politically. Some people even say the church is as powerful as the law, especially in the past. And I found a very interesting article in the Cyprus Mail. It's called 
the church has lost its political role. And I quote, the church of Cyprus has a sinful past. I am referring to the ecclesiastical coup of 1972-73, which paved the road for the military coup in July 1974, and all that followed in the ensuing weeks. I leave that up for discussion and I don't add my opinion here. Also something that is very interesting is that the church has a lot of properties and real estate and they rent it out. It's a rumor that the properties that they own are worth billions. Anyway, the average Cypriot in Cyprus is very religious, much more than in the West. For example, in Limassol there is a church and I used to live close by and I always saw people praying when they walked or drove past. I've never seen something like that in the West and here it's basically every day. By the way, everything I say in this video and everything I said is purely for educational and entertaining purposes, nothing else. So let's talk about number seven, the North conflict. A highly emotional, political and complex topic that I briefly discussed earlier is the North-South conflict. There are many great objective videos out there of the year 1974 and I recommend you watching those, but this video wouldn't be complete without touching this topic. And there is one thing particularly that I wanted to talk about and that is that many Greek Cypriots had to leave the north when the north was invaded and they had to leave all of their belongings, all of their properties and land behind and they had to start over in the south. And because of this back then so many families have lost their homes overnight. Imagine one day you wake up and you just have three hours to pack all of your things and you will never return home, not even decades later. Until today, the country is split in half. The North is not a part of Europe. The infrastructure there is not the best. They don't have the strongest currency. And there are so many abundant properties and cities. Leave a comment down below about the topic that you find the most interesting so I will make a more in-depth video about it. And subscribe to the channel so you will not miss it.